Hello and welcome to the all new season of Connected. On the show, we venture into the world of animals as we chat with the RSPCA's Michael Beatty about how you can get involved. A new cafe culture is emerging in southeast Queensland with the opening of the first Cat Cuddle Cafe. We'll catapult you behind the scenes to find out what's in store. And Bruiser, the chihuahua made famous in the movie Legally Blonde, may have had a charmed life, but some chihuahuas need rescuing. We'll find out more about that as well. But first up on the program today, it is time to check out what's happening around South East Queensland. And to do that, we're joined by Brisbane radio guru, Hinksy. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you doing? Exceptionally well. What is in store for us in South East Queensland? Well, not much, really. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. There is a great show coming to QPAC. Uh, do you like the TV show The Golden Girls? Oh, who doesn't? I'm a, a bit of a Blanche man myself. Of course you are. What about you? I like Sophia. Oh, really? A bit of a, an older woman type? Yes, I like my snow leopards. <laughs> and what is a snow leopard? Well, a snow leopard is the transition from a cougar. Oh, really? With okay. snow in the hair, you know how it works? Yeah, but, I do. But uh, anyway, the Golden Girls is coming to QPAC on stage as done by puppets. No way. It's going to be absolutely hilarious. October 6 to 17 at the Cremorne Theatre at QPAC. Get tickets to this. If you're a fan of the Golden Girls, you should like it. And just quickly before we go as well, uh, go and see uh, Speed, the movie, the play, which is on now until October 17 at the Brisbane Powerhouse as well. And spoiler alert, the bomb's on the bus. Oh, thanks for that. We'll get back to you. <laughs> I'll see you next week. The RSPCA is Australia's oldest, largest and most trusted animal welfare organisation. With this privileged position comes great responsibility to care for all creatures, great and small. This could not be achieved without the help of passionate staff and volunteers who work tirelessly for all of the animals in their care. Volunteers are necessary in order for the RSPCA to run its 40 shelters Australia-wide as it costs more than $80 million each year to deliver all of their services which help improve the lives of Australian animals. Um, with the RSPCA we have so many animals that need um, individual care and individual volunteers to be able to help. They only are able, if we don't have enough volunteers, the dogs themselves can't get out every single day for a walk. So we endeavour to take them at least twice a day for a walk, but if we don't have enough volunteers, then they don't get, you know, the individual love and care that they need before they find their new family. RSPCA volunteers enjoy the fulfilment that comes from making a vital difference to the lives of animals. With various tasks and roles available, it's a great way to gain experience, develop new skills, meet new people and get involved in the animal welfare cause. Without the continued support of volunteers, the RSPCA would not be able to help the 44,000 abused, abandoned or injured animals that come into their care every year. With volunteers who generously contribute their time, skills and energy to support the RSPCA, they can continue their mission of helping animals, enlightening people and changing lives. Well, in particular, down here at the Wildlife Hospital, we see so many cases come through every year, um, especially in spring, you know, when the animals are on the move, the number of animals that we see every day, we would not function without the volunteers' help. Um, we obviously have our staff and our experienced staff, but the passion that we see with our wildlife is what helps us day to day, getting these guys rehabilitated, treated and straight back out into the wild. So foster carers and even um, volunteers that we have in the hospital, we just wouldn't function without them. In a day we could have anywhere up to 80 jobs, just in the Brisbane area. Um, we used to only have two vehicles on the road, um, now we have uh, five in the Brisbane area, one on the Gold Coast, um, and you know, just ha having that uh, resource for the volunteers is, is, is a huge help. Um, means that we can action, attend to jobs a lot quicker, um, and you know, we get, we're getting help for those animals a lot sooner. With each new volunteer that joins the RSPCA, their positive impact on the lives of animals grows stronger. Volunteering may just change your life, and it will certainly change the lives of the many animals in their care. It's a great story, and certainly they do a great job. Our first guest has been with the RSPCA for more than 11 years, and has worked with many news organisations within Australia as well. Michael Beattie, welcome to the program. Hi, Damien. How are you going? Great to see you. Have you got enough volunteers? Uh, the simple answer is we can always do with more, but having said that, statewide, we've got well over 3,000 volunteers, and if it wasn't for those volunteers, honestly, we just 
we couldn't open up. I mean, we're just so dependent on, on volunteers, obviously being a charity. Is it difficult because, I mean, people's lives are so busy these days uh, to, to get volunteers? Well, I'm always amazed that we do get the number of volunteers uh, but, but that we actually do, you know. And they, uh, it's encouraging that they range right across the ages too. I mean, everyone says, oh, young people now, they're so selfish, they don't do this, they don't do that. Well, as far as the RSPCA is concerned, that's just not true. I, I mean, we get volunteers, I mean, li literally from the age of 75 through to the age of 18. And we're in the process of hoping to be able to lower it to 16, but uh, at the moment it's, uh, y you have to be 18 and over. Of course, one thing we can all do as animal owners is look after our pets so that they don't have to end up at the RSPCA. Exactly, and get them desexed too. Yes. Yeah. We're just coming into the cat breeding season now. You know, the end of September uh, is a major problem for us. You know, please get your pet desexed. I mean, apart from anything else, you're going to save money with the registration fees. Mm. But uh, yeah, I mean, responsible ownership is. As, as we always say, you know, uh, owning a pet uh, isn't a right, it's actually a privilege mm. and with that privilege comes certain responsibilities and uh, if everyone exercised those responsibilities, there'd probably be no need for the RSPCA. Well, certainly as far as domestic animals go. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, you get not just the domestics, but you get a lot of other animals as well too, don't you? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the RSPCA in Queensland is the only state RSPCA that actually deals with native wildlife as well mm. um, and the old saying build it and they'll come well in our old Fairfield shelter um, where the wildlife surgery was literally about the size of a cupboard uh, you know we were dealing with about three and a half thousand animals native animals a year um, well now where we've got a dedicated wildlife hospital uh, we're dealing with over 15,000 native animals and if you compare that say to Australia Zoo that deal with about 7,000 and Corumban about 6,000 but we're right in the middle you've got Australia Zoo, us and then down on the Gold Coast Corumban. It's a big job that the RSPCA does and I guess you know not many people would be aware of, of the good work that's done. Well I, I mean if you consider and you know as you say I've been there now 10 years I said I'd help out for six weeks <laughs> and I'm still there for my sins but, uh, you, you know, the operating costs have just skyrocketed since I've been there. Mm. Um, I mean, it costs us now just over $38 million to operate the RSPCA in Queensland on an annual basis. So that gives you some idea of the scope. Uh, you know, and we've got education department, we've got inspectors, we've got, you, you know, there's a vast range of activities that we do. It's not just looking after domestic animals. So the messages that you've got at the moment is help volunteer Get your uh, pets desexed and make sure you look after them. Absolutely, and and also, uh, and this is something younger people can do is they can persuade their parents maybe to become a foster carer because we're always looking for foster carers as well. Fantastic, mate. Well, it's great work. RSPCA has been doing it for a very long time, and no doubt they'll continue to do the wonderful work with uh, many more volunteers. Hopefully. Yeah, absolutely, Damien. Good to see you, Michael. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, take care. Michael Beattie joining us there from the RSPCA, and coming up next we have Katina Balson from the Cuddle Cat Cafe, minutes away from Brisbane CBD. She's here to explain a concept many thought could be catastrophic. And welcome back to Connected. Well, opening just a few weeks ago was Brisbane's first cat cuddle cafe. And since then, the staff have been so busy they haven't been able to pause for breath. Apologies about that one too. Uh, we're now joined by Katina Bolson and she runs this cafe in Red Hill. How are you, Katina? Hello, how are you? Exceptionally well. Great concept. How did it come about? Um, it's kind of been a natural progression from um, the cat rescue I've been doing for so many years. I started with a cat-themed gift shop called Pussy's Galore in Paddington, and that was also a, a way to home cats um, and raise money for the rescue, because, you know, having a rescue is an expensive little business. Mm. Um, we've opened an op shop as well to try and raise money again for the rescue, and this is the next step up, and this is the one that's really hitting the mark. <laughs> now, you did a crowdfunding program to, to get the cafe started and yeah. were surprised by the reaction. Yeah, it was fantastic. It's great. The crowdfunding 
got us our start-up money to you know, pay for leases and insurances and things like that. So that was excellent. And uh, the rest of the money can concentrate on our build. It was quite a bit of an intricate build mm. to get it um, council specs and all that sort of stuff going and um, make it cat friendly as well. Now, Katina, something too I'm sure Michael would be very interested in is the fact that since you've opened, uh, you've rehomed more than 20 cats. Actually, the number went up this weekend. So we're basically we've homed one cat a day and every day we've opened. That's great. It's, it's phenomenal, amazing, isn't it? Terrific, yeah. 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 And, and you obviously vet okay. the people coming in too. You yeah. don't just give a cat to anybody. We could have homed maybe double that, but a lot of the homes aren't so necessary. A lot of people get caught up when they come to the cafe, they fall in love with a cat and they want one and it's very impulsive. So they might not have thought it through the commitment or their house might not be suitable to um, keep a cat safely. So we've, we've actually got to coach them and uh, go through all the requirements. We, we've, um, we, we're just as hard I would, as the RSPCA to try and find a good home because um, we do really, really strong checks, make sure it's a suitable home. Yeah. It's for the life of the cat, not for a whim. Now, one would imagine that a, a cafe environment uh, would make the cats even more skitty, but uh, you select them very carefully. Actually, we thought we'd have to select for temperament, but you know, we, as long as we're chilled about it, the cats are a colony animal. They find their way in the colony. So the cafe is a little colony, and even though the cats are coming and going and there's a settle in period, Obviously, if the cats are too stressed, we give them enough time, we put them back. We've only um, had to send one back to Foster because he was just too stressed. Mm. All the others just work their way in. It's a very, very relaxed and calm environment. People love it um, and just chill, chill out. The cats are just roaming around, having a great time. So it's actually natural for cats to live in a, in a group. Great. It's a no wonder you're going to have Michael Beatty down there every day having his coffee man, yeah. cafe latte. Oh, I'll tell you what, if, they, like si if they serve scotch, I'll be there like a flash. <laughs> no, I'll be down anyway. No, I'd love yeah. to come and have a look at it. I mean, it's just so important that these, you know, we rely very heavily on other rescue groups as mm. well, you know, and, and, and this is just another the, the bonus, really. I mean, mm. we just, you know, as you know only too well, there's a lot of animals looking for homes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and w what's great, I think, about the cat cafe, because I, I know you do tell people that the cat, you can actually have inside cats, yes. and cats can quite happily exist inside a, a house or an apartment all the time, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's love more than space that they need. Yeah. So and they get plenty of that at the cafe. They do, they certainly um, do. Now, of course, numbers are limited. You only, uh, only allow a certain amount in each time. That's right. Uh, the, the, for cats and humans, actually. So we limit the amount of people that can come in each session. So they actually have to book because we are completely booked out yeah. most days, um, especially weekends. So we don't want too many people in. We've got to consider the welfare of the cats, number one. Mm-hmm. Then we consider the welfare of the humans, <laughs> but um, it's a pretty good place for both. They get they're getting so much attention. The cats are loving it. I could imagine. And um, and we're working with other groups too because it's not just Pussy's Galore Rescue, which is my shelter, but um, all the small rescue groups. We're just linked in as, with one goal. That's mm. just get the animals into good homes. The wonderful thing about the cafe is that people are meeting adult cats. Uh, it's usually kittens we home so easily, but they meet, they come in not expecting to fall in love with an adult. And we're moving a high proportion of adult cats than kittens, and that's that's, that's, that's the joy terrific. of this place. It yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. We yeah. can check it all out at 160 Musgrave Road in Red Hill. That's right. And you're open every day. We're at, we close Mondays. Mondays. Well, you've got to have a day off. Cat day of rest. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us Thank on the program. Thank you very much. That's all. And of course, you can check it out. The Cat Cuddle Cafe in Musgrave Road, Red Hill. You can get along to it right now. Well, something a little different now here on Connected. The Brisbane Chihuahua Rescue is not-for-profit organisation that is racing around the CBD rescuing chihuahuas of all shapes and sizes. And I'm very pleased to say that joining us in the studio we have Carrie Trainer-Doble. How are you, Carrie? Good, thank you. Thank you and you brought us. some friends along as well? Yes, this is Napoleon and Aurora. Fantastic. Of course, these dogs were made famous in the, the movie Legally Blonde. Uh, I think everybody knew about them by then, didn't they? Yes, that's right. They have been well known for those such movies and, you know, movies such as Snakes on a Plane and Beverly Hills Chihuahua. So <laughs> they, are, they have a lot of personality. So I think they um, are quite a, a star in their own. Um, however, it's something that to our Rescue Queenslander really focused on is making sure that people view them as dogs, which is mm -hmm. what they are. 
Um, and actually when treated like dogs, um, they end up being much better pets and much happier animals as well. So we don't really treat them as handbag accessories, we treat them as, as dogs and family members. Which is the way they should be. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Now Carrie, how many uh, dogs would you rescue over the course of a 12 month period? Um, we have, uh, we started off as a, a branch of To Our Rescue Australia and then we grew so fast that we actually decided to um, base our own Queensland base. Um, so in the last 15 months that we've been around, we've rescued 166 um, and one cat, um, which is an honorary chihuahua that is um, heading its way to the Cat Cuddle Cafe. Um, and um, so, yeah, so generally we have, um, on average, I guess, a couple of dogs coming into care each week. Which is amazing and, and surprising to see that the Chihuahua is such a popular breed. Uh, very popular. Um, we do rescue a lot of other small, small breeds. Um, one of the things that we find is um, small dogs just don't cope in shelter environments. So uh, people often comment that they go to the RSPCA and they see a lot of larger dogs. Um, and the reason for this is that, I mean, the RSPCA is still rescuing little dogs, but often they need to be sent to foster care. Um, so when you put a little dog in a shelter environment, they can get very stressed. Um, and therefore there's a, a huge need to actually transfer these dogs out of a shelter environment and into foster care. And that's why groups such as ours um, exist. Um, there's certainly large dogs rescue groups as well because there's lots of large dogs that don't cope in the shelter as well um, but we see a particular need to actually transfer the little dogs out of the shelter yeah. um, they get very stressed and of course Michael I'm sure you'd agree that having organizations like this in southeast Queensland is a godsend to the RSBCA as well oh absolutely vital and uh, we had our big adopt out uh, a couple of weeks ago and there were over 30 different rescue groups and two hour rescue was part of that um, so, I mean, it's just absolutely vital and I think the point that, that, that Carrie made that is really important is that chihuahuas need to be treated as dogs and not as people. I mean, we've seen it a, a few times in the past after a, a movie has been successful, 101 Dalmatians, Beverly Hills Chihuahua, all of a sudden everyone wants a chihuahua or a Dalmatian. And chihuahuas and Dalmatians don't, aren't always the ideal dog f for some people. Yeah, and of course people need to be, as we said before, responsible owners of pets. Mm -hmm. And you know, any type of dog really takes a lot of care, doesn't it? Absolutely. And um, we are very um, careful with selecting the homes that we adopt our dogs to. Um, we get applications constantly, um, especially for the little ones. People are really attracted to these tiny little dogs like Aurora. Um, but sometimes actually a tiny weeny little dog isn't the best idea for someone maybe with toddlers or small children. Um, and so we do work closely with other rescue groups um, around Brisbane and we will try and link people in with a more suitable dog for them if, if one of ours is not the right dog for their family. Mm. Um, in saying that though, we have lots of two hours that are fantastic for, um, for families um, and, and it is just about people being open and, and trusting us to sort of take the advice and, um, and go with the temperament testing that's been done and, and get the right dog for their home. Because you do a four week trial period, don't you? Absolutely. Them? So look, we'll, if one of our dogs wasn't working in the home it was adopted to, we would take it back at any time in its life. But we do specifically offer a period of four weeks where we would completely refund their adoption fee um, with the purpose of trying to give dogs the opportunity to settle into a home um, really well. Fantastic. Um, so. How do they get in touch with you? Um, the best thing is Facebook. Honestly, we're very Facebook based. Um, however, we have a pet rescue profile um, as well, a pet rescue website. Um, and we are in the midst of making our own website at the moment. The dogs have been the priority, so we're a little bit behind on that. <laughs> as they always should be. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on the show, Kerry. Thanks for having us. And that gives you a little bit of an update on the Brisbane Chihuahua Rescue Centre. Doing great work and, uh, of course, we'd like to see a lot more from them. You're with Connected. And welcome back to Connected. Well, it is entertainment time next, and our guest doesn't need any introduction, especially if you are a fan of The Voice or Australian Idol. I'm very pleased to say joining us in the Connected studio, here is Nissa Berger. And all along the brick I sleep.
breathe the tires of nine to five. No plans for us to keep. Baby, we could do anything like dig our toes into the sand and watch the tide roll right in. Champagne flowing through our hands, falling deep to the fantasy. Cause I, I, mm, cause I, I. Chase the sun across the sky, then get lost in the Milky Way for a moment, believing we need never part. And as we wish for a month of Sundays, because I, I, because mm, I. seems to disappear and Monday steals you away from me and back to this relentless monotony and forever seems to disappear until Friday comes and brings you near cause I just want to stay in this bliss let us drag the weekend out together and together so that Monday comes forever and forever so that Monday never comes forever and forever Monday never comes forever and forever so that Monday never comes What a fantastic performance here on Connected, and I'm pleased to say that Nissa has uh, scooted across the studio and joined me on the couch. How are you? I'm very, very well. Thanks for having me. And thank you for entertaining us. Fantastic. What's, what's sort of your inspiration in music? Uh, well, when I was little, I used to always listen to Tina Arena and sing a lot of Tina Arena. Right. She's my absolute idol. But um, for writing music, I guess I, I kind of channel Melissa Etheridge, Alana Miles, um... Do you get, uh, yeah. does it take a while to, to put pen to paper and write the song? Or? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes the song just flows. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it not It depends on flowing. the mood, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. And the Absolutely. Emotion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You've been very busy working on a new album. Yep. And doing so many gigs all over the place. You've got residencies uh, happening as well. Yep. Um, so it must be a great career change from being the high school teacher to finally taking on the music career. Uh, it's definitely, uh, it, it took a lot of guts in the beginning, but yeah, I'm really glad I made that change. Yeah. It yeah. was nerve wracking for you, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think being on The Voice made me realise that oh, if I'm good enough to get there, then maybe I can have a bit more faith and just you know, try to make my living out of singing. So yeah. That was even, what I did. Even when you get through those blind auditions, that's an achievement in itself, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, they didn't have to air that at mm. all, so I was very grateful that they did. Like, yeah. my story is like, it's, it's not, you know, I don't have a great backstory, but, um, you know, I'm from a beautiful family, and 
that's not really great TV, but um, I'm really, really happy that they, they aired that. And of course, from then on, you've gone to do a lot of festivals, uh, yep. playing different events uh, on the Gold Coast, yep. uh, Brisbane. Uh, you, you know, must be working seven days a week. Uh, four days a week, pretty much, but seven <laughs> days a week in the office um, doing admin, <laughs> 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 running my own business and being my own business. <laughs> yeah, because it is tough. You got to do all of that side of thing too, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think I work harder now as a as a musician than I did as a high school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, look, uh, we can of course check out your website now. What's that address for us? Oh, uh, it's nissaberger.com. All right. I'll check you out yeah. on Facebook as well. Oh, please do. It's Nissa Berger Music on Facebook um, and Instagram and Twitter and all that sort of stuff. But uh, the album comes out at the end of the year. Um, um, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to sharing it with you. Great. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. And that about wraps up the show for us. We're going to be back with another show next week, so make sure you join us and stay connected. <laughs>